A leaf comes to life. A brimstone. The butter-coloured fly that may have given all butterflies their name. And the changing colour of a speckled wood chrysalis means it's almost ready to emerge. Woodland butterflies, like the white admiral and silver-washed fritillary, have declined dramatically. They remind us that habitat isn't just lost when a building goes up or a hedgerow is ripped out. It also disappears with neglect. The heath fritillary was known as the woodman's friend. Thriving where trees were cut down and light flooded in allowing its food plant, common cow wheat, to grow. It was close to extinction, but now creates one of Britain's biggest butterfly spectacles. Thanks to people resurrecting traditional ways of managing the woodland. But butterflies are also giving us vital information about another threat to our wildlife and they're doing it through moments of beauty, like this. Two and a half thousand kilometers from Britain's south coast into Morocco. What he found there helped to reveal how butterflies can benefit from climate change. In summer, the painted lady is one of Britain's commonest butterflies, but in winter, it disappears. Where they go had been a mystery, but Spanish scientist Constanti Stefanescu found them. He'd been searching for years, but at last he'd found what he'd been looking for. High in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco were hundreds of thousands of nomads waiting for the right conditions to push north. Constanti's discovery proved that painted ladies travel further than anyone had thought. It never hibernates. Instead, it lives its life as a restless nomad that's always on the move, tracking the best places at the right moments. Painted lady caterpillars have simple tastes. Thistles, nettles and mallows common plants found from Africa to the Arctic Circle, but crucially at different times of year. Instead of waiting for their plants to grow, the painted lady goes looking for them, flying wherever its food plants are to be found. 
individuals can travel two and a half thousand kilometers from the mountains of Morocco all the way to Britain. Like any nomad, they rarely pass an opportunity to refuel. Sugary dates from the trees, or for sale in local souks, and on flowers briefly brought to life by the slowest moving stream. Although, feeding here has its own risks. Many painted ladies perish on their journey. The large blue was once extinct in Britain, but it relies on farm animals in a way so bizarre you couldn't make it up. Meadow ants nesting in the grass may irritate the adults, but are an unlikely asset for their caterpillars. That's because large blues have a rather interesting approach to parental care. Their young are adopted by ants. The caterpillar mimics the sound and smell of the ant's own young and, mistaken for a mislaid ant larva, is taken back to the nest by the foraging ant workers. But it doesn't repay the favour. Once underground, the caterpillar leads a predatory life eating the ant's own larvae, until one day it's ready to change into a pupa, and eventually emerges as one of Britain's rarest butterflies. Ants are vital to the butterfly, but if the grass is too long, they move out. So without sheep to keep the grass short, there'd be no ants, and without the ants, the large blue would be lost. But this place is a nature reserve, and we can't turn the entire countryside into one of those. But in the long term, we will have to produce food sustainably. And government schemes are now encouraging farmers to restore intensively farmed land for wildlife. Farmland that encourages butterflies is a place of flowering meadows and field margins buzzing with life. Butterflies can bring back the wildlife-rich countryside we adore. But unless these oases are joined up, the butterflies trapped here will always be at risk. Hello YouTube, I'm Nicola, and for today's slow-mo, I've convinced Sai to bring the camera along to Bristol Zoo to film one of my absolute favourite creatures, butterflies. Butterflies flap their wings around 25 times per second, which is pretty speedy. What um, first shot do you think we should go for? I think we should just start with a takeoff.
got it. And what frame rate was this one? This was at 1,000. So what's what's happening with that abdomen then, Nick? Why is, why is that shaking up and down? Like, so he's bringing it up there. Yeah. Then... Well, butterflies are capable of combining a variety of um, aerodynamic maneuvers to fly. And uh, they're even inspiring scientists to develop small flying robots based on the way they move, awesome. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Butterflies are quite different to birds and planes. They're actually much more like swimmers. So they like push the air around them in order to move through it. Right. So if you look at this um, lace wing that we've captured here, you can see as it's taken off, it's peeling its wings apart um, from the front. And that causes the air to rush down and right. it increases the force of the downward push right, um, right. Which, which allows it to lift. So you can see this guy is coming in and really throwing on the brakes or trying to maneuver. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. And you see how it gets its wings at quite a steep angle. Yeah. One of the ways they do this is they create like these swirling vortices on the edges of their wings oh, which right. is kind of like a mini whirlwind. So by doing that these whirlwinds kind of create a push and it enables them to again get more lift to move with. Oh wow. Yeah it's pretty That's cool. pretty amazing. But I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. But when he takes off kind of leaves his legs hanging for a little bit. Some studies have found that butterflies flies will raise one leg in the air to kind of do their pre-flight checks as if they're checking the wind cool. see if they can take off and then yeah they've got sensors in their feet and once they realize the conditions are good they can take off pretty pretty techy little animals then yeah i'd <laughs> say so Whoa, that's awesome. They actually look pretty clumsy when they take off. Yeah, and that um, irregularity actually works to their advantage. So if you think about if you slam a book shut like this, it kind of causes a, a push of air to move up yeah. and the butterfly uses that to move down. It oh. kind of combined with the other aerodynamic maneuvers that it's capable of, that's what we see as a flutter. And it actually makes it much more difficult for predators to catch them in the wild. So if you think about if you were in the street and you did like a combination of a hop, a skip and a backflip instead of a walk, it would People much, would think I was mad. They would think you were mad, <laughs> but it would make you much less predictable. Yeah, they're not as clumsy as they might look. There's actually quite a lot of technique to it. There's a lot of technique going on there, yeah, and we just don't see it in real time. So this long appendage that we're seeing here is called a proboscis and it's what butterflies use to feed. So it's kind of like a, a modified jaw. So right. two segments kind of come together to form a tube. So the main staple of a butterfly's diet is nectar, but as yep. you can see here they also eat fruit. And what's really interesting about these guys is that they taste with their feet. Uh, <laughs> so if that were me I'd be tasting my socks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. Ugh. So they've got these, uh, these things in their feet called chemoreceptors. And uh, when they land on something sweet, it tells their proboscis to unroll and to drink. Wow, that's incredible. That's yeah. really cool. So you can see with this species that the wings are this brilliant blue colour, yep. but actually they're brown. There's tiny structures on the surface of the wing and they're disrupting the light frequencies so that it's only reflecting blue light. Oh wow. Yeah, it's pretty That's cool. That's pretty amazing.